on either a teenager or an adult. Okay. Not me. We're not on the All right. Very good. And what is your name? Ariel. Ariel, pleased to meet you. I'm Mr. Mike, the Amazing Magi. Would you stand right over here? Now, you said Ariel. Yes. You know, do you do a lot of swimming? Yeah, I'm a lifeguard. Okay. Anyway, Ariel, in here I have some colored handkerchiefs. Will you pull them out? I think there's four of them in there. And you can just lay them right here on top of my table for now. And now, Ariel, I'm so glad you volunteered because this is the part where we test your Bible knowledge. <laughs> Aren't you so glad you volunteered? Yes. But the good news is if you watch these game shows, you can ask a friend. If I ask you a question and you don't know the answer, we'll ask the audience for some help, okay? Now, I want you to think. There are many creation stories in the Bible. A lot of people don't realize that, but there are more than two. But right now I'd like to talk about the two main creation stories found in the Bible. What book of the Bible are those two creation stories found? Hint, it's the first book. Genesis. There we go! Give her a great big hand. That's right, it's in Genesis. Now, what I want you to do, Ariel, is pick out any of those colored handkerchiefs, pick one out, hold it up real high, and now this is where the audience has to use their imagination. We're talking about creation. So in the creation story, what could the color green represent? A tree. Grass. Grass, that's right. Go ahead, throw that in there, Ariel. Now, pick up another color. Okay, we have orange in the creation story. What could orange represent? Ooh, not orange. Oranges. Oranges, that's good. Anybody else have another one? The sun, that's right. Go ahead and put that there. Okay, hold that one up real high. Now twirl it around a little bit. Sky! Sky! All right, very good. You know what, Ariel? It has nothing to do with the trick. I just wanted to see if you do it. Okay, just hold it up high. There you go. Now, we have the color blue. In the creation story, what could the color blue represent? The sky. The sky or the sky or the water. The water. There you go. Put that in there. Okay. And last but not least, we have the color black. Again, we're talking about the creation story. What could black represent? Night! Okay, night! There we go. Go ahead and throw that in there. Now, I have a next Bible question for you, Ariel. Okay. In the Bible story of creation, it tells us that every time there was a creative act, God either said or thought something, a very short phrase. Do you know what that was? Do we need to call a friend? Yeah. Who in this congregation do you think we should ask? Because you get the pick. Pastor Tom. I said, no pastors allowed. There we go. Well pleased or it was good. Now I want you to remember that again. Many times as Christians, we forget that very important word about creation. It was good. We get so caught up in what's wrong with the world, we forget that when God created everything, it was good. Now, I have another question for you. This time it's not a Bible question. This is an older movie, but you may have seen it. You may not have. Have you ever seen the movie The Lion King? Yeah. Okay, do you remember the lion's name? Simba. Simba. In the movie The Lion King, there's a song in the movie called The Circle of Life. Anybody remember that song? You know, The Circle of Life? Well, the Bible tells us even though they don't call it the circle of life, that's what the Bible basically explains life is. Earlier today, I was in my other role, of course, as pastor, and I had a funeral. And I got to talk about the cycle of life. But life really is a cycle 
or a circle. There's a beginning and then there's an end. And then God gives us other promises and gifts when this earthly cycle comes to an end. But there is a circle. And I used to watch The Lion King with my granddaughter all the time while I was doing stuff. But anyway, there's one more Bible question for you. Okay? When God created humanity, men and women, he said that we were to have what over the earth? <laughs> you need to whisper it just a little louder for Ariel. <laughs> okay. Dominion. Now, I don't like the word dominion. That's how it is translated sometimes. Think of it more as stewardship. God created a wonderful creation that God said was good. And then God said, we, God's greatest creation, was entrusted to care for it. Because everything in creation is connected. For instance, I assume if somebody gave you a glass of really yucky, dirty, muddy water, you would not want to drink it, right? Correct. Correct. And how about anybody ever go to step off the curb right after a bus leaves and leaves you that wonderful aroma? Pretty nasty, right? We like clean air, we like clean water. We are supposed to take care of God's creation because it is all connected. And now, would you take those things out one more time? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, pull it out. Would you hold that up for us? Because everything in God's good creation is connected because it is one of God's great good gifts for us. Can we give Ariel a round of applause for being a wonderful assistant? Thank you very much.